What's up everyone, Jack here from Half Grown. Today I want to tell you about this guy. This is the Hubson Zeno 2 and it's a folding drone with a 4K camera that can take video at 60 frames a second. That's right, that's the same as this, the DJI Mavic Air 2 and it's not quite as expensive. So, should you opt for one of these? Well, let's take a closer look. All right, so this guy is a folding drone. You gotta go with the front arms forward first, otherwise you'll get stuck under these a uh, little bit longer legs, and it unfolds and it looks a lot like a Mavic. Now this is actually a lot bigger than some of these drones that you see here in front of me. It's about the size of the Mavic 2 series. It's actually pretty heavy, just over 920 grams or so. Um, so you are definitely gonna have to register this with the FAA. Now initially when this thing was launched, it launched at $399. That's the same price as this, the tiny Mavic Mini. But there were some things that happened and now it's retailing at $599 or $549 if you order it directly from Hubson. So let's talk about is it worth it at that price. Before you can make that decision, you have to see how it flies. Now, I've flown this a handful of times and I got kind of mixed results. My initial flight, I took it up and it just really was not stable. I highly, highly recommend you wait until you get 12 or even 15 satellites with this thing. Once it did lock onto a bunch of satellites, it was pretty darn stable. It handled the wind pretty solid um, and it flies pretty well in most modes. Now I did have some issues with it maintaining altitude. It just seemed to rise or lower for no apparent reason. So it doesn't quite have the stability that you might get with a DJI Quad or even the Peridonafi. Hubson just kind of has a history of making drones with pretty solid cameras, at least for that price point, but then just not really following through with software and firmware and hardware that kind of match the camera quality. You know, there are little things about this that I'm just not a fan of. First, let's talk about the white color. It's not that I dislike that it's white, but if you look the body and the arms, they're slightly a different color. These arms kind of have almost a, an off-white tinge to it. You can kind of really see that here uh, with the cover for the SD card. It's a different color. The arms are slightly closer to that than they are to this. Like that just is, you know, it's not a big deal. It's certainly just cosmetic, but it's one of those little attentions to detail that Hubson just seems to miss. And like I said, the camera quality coming out of this is pretty good. Let's take a look at some of those pictures and video. All right, so let's take a look at some 4K footage coming out of this drone. Now, this shot here, we shot at 4K 60. You know, the camera is really pretty nice. The gimbal does a nice job of keeping things stable. It's, you know, a good quality drone in that regard. Um, you know, just very crisp, clean lines here. Uh, you know, I really like it. Uh, you know, the picture may be maybe just a bit overexposed. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There are three different color profiles that it kind of has as defaults. Uh, this is the default one. Like I said, I think it's a little bit, I don't know, overexposed or it just looks a little goofy to me. Then we here we have the sunny profile. I think I kind of like this a little bit better. Of course, it is a sunny day. And then we, of course, have the cloudy profile, um, which, you know, not really working for me here. Now, this is another shot, and it's showing some artifacts, uh, specifically in the lower left corner and a little bit in the lower right corner. You can see the trees as they go by, they look a little orange. Um, you know, I'm not sure what that is. I didn't get it to duplicate in other shots. So, you know, maybe just an aberration or maybe that's how the, the sun was hitting it. But, you know, that was just a, a little goofy. You know, uh, one thing that I'm not a big fan of is, you know, by default, when I turn this thing on, it starts shooting in 4K 60, right? Which is what we're doing here. But I don't always want to shoot in 4K 60. I prefer to shoot um, in 1080p 30 frames a second. The file sizes are just a little bit more manageable. This is flying on a, a cloudy day or, you know, wasn't quite as bright and I think it looks a little bit better on this day. This is again the normal profile. Now here I'm going to go uh, ahead and this is a part of an orbit um, and I'm going to go ahead and color correct. Uh, I'm going to turn the exposure down a little bit, uh, made it a little bit greener, you know, you know, color 
video, it's all super subjective. So you gotta do what you think is best for you, right? So what, why are you shooting? What kind of shots do you want to get? You know, it does some cool things like hyperlapse. It's kind of fun. I, I like using hyperlapse to get the move in the clouds and the trees. Um, the follow me mode works just fine. Um, you know, it follows me. It's, it's tracking me pretty well. It does a good job. Uh, I'm going to move, you know, I'm not moving super fast, uh, but keep in mind, there's no obstacle avoidance on this thing, right? So basic specs here, no obstacle avoidance, 33 minute flight time. If you saw my video, you saw that uh, my actual flight time was closer to uh, 25 minutes and you get a range of about 8,000 meters. You know, of course, I'm not flying that far away. I'm not flying this thing out of my uh, line of sight. Now, the app itself is fine. You know, it's fairly basic, right? You know, it's it's intuitive enough. Uh, we've got the modes here on the on the left in the upper right hand corner. You can change uh, your settings, uh, your your video settings and things like that. The big issue I have is it doesn't save the changes I want. So you can see there it by default has watermarks on my videos. Why the heck would I want that? And I have to turn it off every time or it's going to ruin my, my pictures. This is the remote that comes with it. You can see that it's foldable as well. It has an LCD display, so you get some telemetry and some information on the screen, uh, which is definitely a bonus. Uh, it slides down. This is where your smartphone goes. You're not going to get an iPad mini in here, but you can get a pretty large smartphone. It does come with enough cables uh, so that you can you know, opt for whatever phone you choose, whether it's iPhone or Android, and the gimbal sticks are hidden below. You have three modes on the remote here, uh, film, normal, and sport. Film is for flying slow, normal is normal, and then sport, uh, you'll kick up the speed. Now you do have to be, I think it's five meters off the ground, and actually sometimes I had to be more in order to engage sport modes. So just keep that in mind. Uh, on the top you have buttons uh, for video and pictures. You have a function button that you can kind of center the camera or does some other things, and then you have a gimbal wheel, and you can adjust the speed there too. Now, here is a problem that I have, right? These sticks, okay, except for that one. See that? That is not acceptable. Um, I've written my contact at Banggood. I'm pretty sure they're gonna take care of me, but you know what? They also know I'm making this review, so you kinda have to keep that in mind. Ordering these drones from retailers like Banggood, sometimes customer service is great and sometimes it, it takes a while and sometimes it's non-existent so i highly recommend if you're going to buy something like this make sure you do it with paypal you get some extra protections when you do so now i ordered mine with the case so i got this case which actually is really nice has a good spot for the battery in here i got an extra battery some props uh, some cables and things like that. But overall, I did really like this case. It fits in here really well. And the extra battery, of course, comes in handy. Okay, so what else do you wanna know about this thing? Well, it has a handful of intelligent flight modes, circle, waypoints, uh, line fly. It does some follow me, which worked okay. Um, it does an orbit, which you have to find the GPS on the remote. So I wasn't a big fan of how that worked. Uh, there is hyperlapse as well. The camera quality is good. Now it does shoot 4K 60, uh, but I prefer to shoot at 1080 30. And uh, I had to go back in and change my settings every time I wanted to fly because it just didn't set anything in the app, right? So it kind of defaults to 4K 60. So I, I forgot I got a larger file size than I was looking for. All right, so the question is, would I recommend this drone? No, not at $599, I wouldn't. There are just better options out there. I like the DJI Mavic Mini at $399. I think it's it's a more stable drone. It is more reliable. The, you know, the reliability coming out of Hubson just is, is kind of hit or miss. So, you know, if you need something that's not DJI, then the Peridonafi. Now this thing is floating somewhere between six and $700 brand new, but you can actually get a refurbished one for 549 bucks. And I believe it comes with an extra battery. That is a heck of a deal. Now this doesn't have obstacle avoidance, but it is really darn stable and has some of the best tracking features uh, on a drone not called Skydio. Now, if you're thinking about spending $599 on the Hubson, I'd actually encourage you, rather than going down in price and buying the better Mavic Mini, I'd recommend you spend an extra $100 and you buy one of these. This is the DJI Mavic Air 2, and this is just a phenomenal drone. It is 10 times the Hubson, right? 
for a hundred extra bucks, this is what you want to go with, right? It has a better camera, it is more stable, it has easy to use features, it just does a whole lot more and it's a whole lot more reliable. But hey, maybe you're a gambler. Maybe you want to take a chance and you want to try something that did with the Hubson Zeno too. Hey, you know what? It's your money. You do what you want to do. I just don't think it's a good value, right? If this thing was 200 bucks, I'd say buy it all day, right? But it's not. If it was $300, yeah, this would be a good drone for $300. Uh, at 400 bucks, eh, again, I still go with the Mavic Mini. So it's kind of come in under that price point. So, you know, with time, maybe it will come down and that's something to take a look at. Now they do have the original Xeno and the Xeno Pro, uh, and those are cheaper, uh, less expensive alternatives. Uh, they don't have quite the camera quality that this Hubson Xeno 2 does, but they're also a little bit less expensive. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, hey, give us a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, check us out on halfchrome.com. Hey, thanks for watching. Good luck and happy flying.